that. Okay, now I'm recording. And and then what I was also going to do was... Yeah. What was I going to do? I forgot now. Oh, well. Yeah, so... I figured we'll try to do the recording... I screwed up and deleted the recording last time accidentally, and so I thought, well, maybe this time I won't delete the recording, and I'll, uh, I'll keep it. All right, cool. So what, what's, the, what's the thought? I thought we could maybe cover tabs, although the way I do tabs is a little... I do use tabs in Vim, but I could show you the way I do them. We can talk about tabs and how they compare to, to buffers, and we could do that. We could also do macros, if people haven't done that. I also thought we could maybe do some, some search and replace, find and replace type things what's the what's your appetite what's the appetite what's the no uh, macros are basically if you need to do if you need to do a series of keystrokes um, and you need to be able to do it over and over and over again then then you can create a quick macro and then run that macro uh, over and over and over again so it's a series of keystrokes that you basically record when you need to and then you can just quickly run that macro over again. We can we can definitely talk about macros. Um, what about NeoVim specific features? How, I mean, that can't be a lot, right? Uh, I actually haven't prepared for that, so I'm not sure exactly what they are. I know that the plugins are asynchronous, but I think they've also done that with Vim 8. Oh, oh, right, okay. um, but we can, yeah, we could, that we could look into that and try them if we wanted to do that. Hey, George. Yeah. Yeah, I'm using. I've been using it because I was tired of waiting for Vim 8, and so I've been using it for a while, and I'm, I love it. Absolutely, yeah, I love it. One of my favorite features. Well, I'm pretty sure this isn't in the latest version of Vim, but if we were to do something like, I have this. Um, I'll just. Well, first I'll do this. So, on the topic of tabs, does anyone know how to open multiple files in Vim into their own tabs? Right, so if I did that, so let's say I want to open, now I'll do a which v, and I've aliased that to nvim, so that opens neovim. So when you see me type v, it's just me typing nvim. I have quite a lot of aliases. I'm a big fan of aliases, especially the ones that I use a lot of. So, um, so if I type v, it's just nvim. So if I type v uh, game and test index, and I just open them that way, it's opened them in buffers. Now I'm using I'm using Powerline in Vim because I just really like I, I don't like Powerline on the on the command prompt, but I love it in Vim and and I also use Tmux and so I use Powerline. So down here this is this is Tmux Powerline and this is the Vim Powerline. So I have it set up to tell me that these are in buffers and to switch back and forth you just hit Tab. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that's. Would that be, did I map that or is that the way it normally is? Oh, is it mine? I think you can do, oh, oh, I have mapped that because we talked about that last time. I would do BN for buffer next and that would, yeah, so buffer next. Oh, that, that, I just remembered the other thing I was going to do. Let me do this. I was going to turn on, and actually I don't have to do it there. I can do it here, but screen key. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on screen key so that you can see what I'm typing as I'm typing it. And so if I, if I type BN, then it goes to the next one if I can type BP for, for buffer previous and buffer next. But I've, I've obviously mapped my tab key to, to those. Um, so I can just hit tab and it just switches between the two. But that's, that's if I want to open them in buffers, then I just run the run all the different files that I want to run within Vim or Vim. They both work the same way. But if I but if I want to open them in tabs, I have a different uh, a different alias setup for VP, and that's just V P. So it's in Vim minus P. So if you if you pass minus P to Vim or Neo Vim, then it'll open all of the files in their own tabs. Right. So if I do, if I do VP, uh, well actually I'll just do the same thing I just did. So if I VP, now it opens them in their own tabs. And I do have my own, I do have my own 
hotkey setup to switch between those, but I do that with shift. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I use Vim tabs. So these, so that VP, that opening uh, the files on multiple tabs is definitely inside uh, Vim. Um, but I also thought, okay, well that's, the ca that's true, but what if I wanna now have a terminal on the right hand side, right? So in this case, if we were to write a little bit of code, here's my test, and if I wanted to run this test and I want a terminal set up, now what do I do? Well, I can do this, and that opens another Tmux split. So now it, this is actually a whole nother terminal over here, which, yeah, you could do that. Um, the other option is to use a Vim split. So I could VSP, and that opens, what is that? A VS, v, VSP, not VPS, right? So now I have another split, and I do have uh, keys set up so that I can just control back and forth between splits and Vim. But what would that, is it split next? See, this is horrible because I've customized it to the point where I don't really know what the defaults are anymore. So control, control W. Arrow keys or Vim movement keys? Oh, sweet. That's the way you're supposed to do it. That's the way that the built-in way of doing it. Okay, cool. Right. Control W or command? Yeah, control W. Oh, right. Well, let's put something different over here. I was going to show you my favorite, my favorite feature of NeoVim that's not uh, in Vim, and that is this. That's amazing. And so to have. And it's not just a terminal, it's it's my terminal, right? Like it's exactly set up the way that so. Yeah. But can I do control W? Yeah, so I need to escape. When you're in the terminal, you have to escape out of the terminal now. Right, so the, I've done another mapping there to, uh, because that's actually not intuitive. What's the normal, does anyone remember? Control. <laughs> Yeah, that now you see why I changed the mapping on that. Control backspace in. Yeah, so now I'm in normal mode for the terminal, and now I can do Control W. What, it's not capital X though, is it? There we go. So now we're now we're changing it. Yeah, but I've mapped it to Control left bracket, which is normally escape in. You know, when you want to escape when you're going from normal mode to insert mode in Vim. So I just mapped it to the, effectively what I already associate with escape. So I can just do that. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I don't use, personally, I don't use a lot of Vim splits, um, I, but I definitely use a lot of buffers and a lot of, of tabs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the way, well, I'm sure we all do it differently, but the way I do it is I use Tmux for that. So I'll have different Tmux sessions going, and then in each session, like for this one, I have a number of different windows open, and some of these have them open in them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's one. That's probably my favorite feature of NeoVim, and I do use it occasionally, where I'll have a have a console open, uh, maybe in a different window or in a different tab, because I don't have to have. If I were to escape out of that and then close that tab, I can just open another. Oh, there we go. So again, I probably shouldn't do this. I should. I should. If I, what is that? T 
tab new, I think is a new tab, is a new tab? Yeah, I've mapped it to leader T. I guess we'll get into, uh, at some point we'll get into all the different key mappings that you can do with leaders and, and other types of, of key mappings. But what I'll normally do is, is do that here. So then I'll put a terminal in a tab and that way I can get back to it easy. I don't have to necessarily see it open all the time. And then, yeah. And I have mapped, as you can tell, I can, I've mapped my capital leader keys to move between tabs and control movement keys can move between um, uh, splits. So again, yeah, I'll do control T gives me uh, nerd tree and then I can get back out. I can go back and forth between nerd tree with control and move back and forth, but that's just how I have it set up. I don't think that's normal. Um, so, so that's tabs. It's probably worth talking about the distinction between tabs and buffers. This is then this is the big change or the big difference that's between Vim and almost any other editor you use is that if you have a tab open in VS Code or Atom or Visual Studio or Sublime Text, if you have tabs open in there, the file's loaded into memory, right? But you can have files loaded into memory into buffers in Vim that don't that aren't in a tab, right? So I can close. If I how would I do this? So I currently have this tab open, and I believe if I close this tab and I look at my, what is it, is it buffers, now it's kind of in the way. No, it did close that file, probably because I'm actually closing the buffer when I close the, I'm closing the buffer, which is closing the tab, but, well, let's do this. Um, if I open another, so if I open my, if I open this and well, if I hit enter, this is just nerd tree, and we haven't talked about nerd tree, but if I hit enter, it opens it in the current, the current, oh, look what it did. That's not what I really meant to do. Um, so, so if I were to open, so now I have my buffers open, and let's see, if I were to open, the index. Okay, so I have two, I have two buffer, two buffers open now, two files open in buffers. And if I open a new tab, so if I tab new, now I have, I still have those two buffers open, but I, I have two tabs now. This tab doesn't have any buffer loaded into it or any files loaded into it. That's why it just says no name. But over here, I can hit tab or bn for buffer next, and I can still get to all three of those files. So, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can load, I, I can have, say, two tabs open with five files open, and I can just, sw I can basically control what buffer is loaded into which tab. I just won't be able to see those other files until I put them into a tab or, or like something. Yeah. 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 I can. Yeah. I can do that. So if I. So this is currently game.js. So if I come over here, there I have them both. So I have now have the same buffer loaded into two. And if I were to. Well. Actually, let's do that. So I'm not even saving it, but as I change one, it's in both. So, and that's not even saving it, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's how I normally have it set up, yeah. Yeah, I normally just put one buffer in each tab in that way. And that's the, the way that I have my is here's a question for you do you know how to tell how do i show what the mapping is from here like i want to see what my mapping is without opening my vimrc file do you know how, is there is there a way to do that like that oh 
Oh, that does list them. Okay. Uh, I have a leader Q. Leader Q is buffer delete. So, and, and if it's in a tab, then it automatically deletes the tab. So the way I normally do it is I have a buffer per tab and I use uh, leader Q. I'm using the, obviously the comma is my leader key and that does a buffer delete. So that's how I that's how I normally do it, but you know, each their own. Does anybody else use buffers and tabs differently? Yeah, how do you do yours? We might want to, so I don't, we haven't tried this yet, but one of the things that's, that I've tried to do with this room is that speaker is a Sonos and it's on the wireless. And so with the Sonos app, we have democratized music in the classroom. And so I think that's pretty cool. And now that we're using a, 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 a Chromecast for the video, we haven't done democratized projecting yet. So if you were keen, you should try to see if you can see the Chromecast and you can present and uh, and show us what you mean. We, I've not tried this before, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but if you can, you should try it. Right. Yeah. And I pretty much never close them. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Uh, mm. uh, do you have mappings to switch between buffers? Or do you just do colon B next, uh, BN, BP? B, B, between or? buffers, I kind of, I do BN, and that's pretty much it. Colon BN? So you, you do yeah, the, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah, actually yeah, type yeah, in yeah. the command for the bottom? I have a complete thing there, and that's pretty much helps me when I forget. Yeah, yeah. Type yeah. It. yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. I control P if I just forget sometimes if I've got something in a buffer because yeah, I can yeah. see how the stuff is working. Yeah, control, are we all familiar with control P? It's a, it is a plug-in to them, but it, it gives you uh, the ability to do fuzzy searching within the folder you're in. So if you want to see the folder you're in, that's just PWD, and that'll show you down here the folder you're in. And then if, if you have control P installed, then when you hit control P, it's kind of hard to see with this screen key thing installed, but I can start typing now here and fuzzy search my way through. Like if I do AGE, it should focus on the package JSON. So AGE and it's selected package.json, right? So it's a fuzzy search way. And if I hit enter, it'll, it'll open it. Yeah. Is that FZF? Yeah, I think they're both really good. I had a former teacher that used FZF and was real happy with it. I've been pretty happy with Control P. I like, like I tried to open up a potential project on VS Code and the Fuzzy Finder in VS Code is not compared to the Fuzzy Finder. I, mean, I think he was asking about comparing FZF between Control yeah, P and uh, yeah, uh, Vim. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't either. I've just always used Control P, so I've been pretty happy with it. But I know Rich uses FZF and loves it. Oh yeah. Hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, and I've actually ended up now with two tabs with three buffers, so now I can. Again, I just happen to know in my head that that I had two files open. I opened a third. Now I only see two tabs. So, uh, yeah, you could. Oh, that's better than buffers. I was typing out buffers before, and that's yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you know exactly what the buffer is, yeah. So B space tab. Oh, look at that. That's badass. 
Now, there you, did you know that? I know. I'm just going to plug in the dust that. Oh, you don't need a plug in. You don't need a plug in for that, obviously, because I'm pretty sure I don't have a plug in for that. But. Cool. Nice, nice tip. That's what I love these meetups for. I learn so much shit. That's nice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, cool. Did you see this? The, did you try it? Did you see the the Chromecast? Oh, the Wi-Fi password is is three in spiral. Yeah. So it's like in spiral instead the the capital E is a three. It's the only difference. So that's the Wi-Fi password. And it's the EDA network. It's like crazy secure. Um, there's like framed boards around the building that have the Wi-Fi password on it, and we've framed them and put them around, so it's no, it's no secret. Um, you can change your, uh, one of the things that I do, and I, I hate myself doing it, but um, because the zero and the one in the face of the people, is I set the number and you want to release that from one. Oh, really? Yeah. So that? I don't use the numbers, actually. I usually just go up and down. Control, control. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do use that. So, oh, that's cool. Whoops. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I usually just uh, control B S. Yeah. Comfortable motion. No, I've used easy motion. Is it similar? It does. It does this. Uh, wait, I did that wrong. Um, and then leader, leader S. And then, well, you can do leader, leader W, leader, leader S. It depends on what you want to search for. But now it's waiting for an input character. And does is is? Did you say comfort motion? Comfortable motion. No. With the mouse, you mean? No, no, no. Oh. Motion keys. Oh, that'd be cool. No, easy motion, and this is another, well, like, easy motion's nice if you want to go to a very specific character on or word on the screen. Like I've done leader leader S, which is my mapping, which I think is the default mapping for easy motion when you want to go to a key. Yeah. So if I want to jump to the at sign in my email address there on line nine, I can do leader leader S and then the ants the at sign. Well, and because there was only one at sign on the screen, it just went to it. But like if I did it again for a T, it highlights all of the T's, and then you just hit the character of the T that you want to go to. So if I want to go to if I want to go to, say for example, this P that I have highlighted, if I want to go directly to that, I can just hit leader leader S P and then G and it takes it straight to that character. So that's that's a pretty sweet plugin if you want to just be able to move around quickly on the screen that you're on. Yep. But moving splits? Or, or resizing them. So if I if I do a B S P like that, and then go over to here, what? What one? Can you see the? Do I need to disconnect for you to connect? Do it. Do it. Sweet, it works. Awesome. Uh, well, um, you know, this is this is a package here, but uh, you can kind of get an idea from the PSP so that things are uh, 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 u
Yeah, you might need to reconnect to it. There you go. No, it's gonna it's gonna be jittery here. Are you just using the normal J and K? Uh, I'm using Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't use that very often, but that's what, like a, yeah. a paging? Yeah, yes, it's paging. So you, if you can do it for Y, Oh, so it just, it just goes if you do GG or capital G to go to the very bottom? You can actually look it up and do that. So if, uh, if I <laughs> but I see. I see. So normally it would just it would just jump directly to it. But this actually does the scrolling, so you you don't lose track of where you are in the file. Uh, well, that's cool. This just means that you don't lose your place. Can you can you just move upwards like after you've gone down a bit? One after he's to the top? Like, do you have a long scrolling Because um, uh, what, uh, what I'm finding is that as I come all the way down, yeah. and then I try going back up again, I get, the, I get a flash. Uh, it's like a render problem. Hmm. What, what, is the what yeah, terminal are you using? What terminal are you using? I what? You're not using uh, iTerm2? Yeah. The thing is, iTerm actually um, does have, I found that the only real way to get perfectly smooth scroll is to use uh, like Macron. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, like one of the other actual tools that you want to put around here, because otherwise mm. iTerm can't handle the reading in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I just found that like this, if you have um, a vertical monitor and you've got like a, a, a window and the entire, yeah, taking up the entire height, you try and scroll down, get quite, 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 Nurtry on the left, and then how did you say you set up your? So, uh, 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 I have an idea of this phone pass now. That's cool. Anybody else want to show anything? <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll take it back over again. Um, also, like that, I didn't have to like give it up. I could, you could just take it.
Alright, um... Uh, what else did we... What else did we have? You say yes? Yeah. I the thing that the thing that did it for me was just that Vim 8's moving really slow and Neo Vim's moving much faster. So in terms of just a community, yeah, I mean there's just you look at the number of pull requests being accepted and the community is just so much more healthier around Neo Vim than it is with Vim. You know, you can use the same ones. Yeah, I use Vim Plug, but now there's so many of them that you can I mean, they're all pretty much work very similarly. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, it is asynchronous. So when you're when you're, I, I don't, I can try it. But if you run um, plug install, then I mean all of them are obviously already installed. But yeah, while it's installing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> While they sit there and install, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I did. I don't know that I had to do very much at all to install. When I went from Vim to Neo Vim, my VimRC pretty much, other than renaming the file, and it, it yeah. 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 Have you done any? Well, we, it's more of an advanced topic, but I think I'd like to get at some point to uh, to talk about Vim scripting and to talk about the other ways that we that, you know we can configure it. But um, macros are probably worth probably worth talking about. We can talk about. Does do you, do you, who uses macros? You already use macros. Well, all right. Well, some people don't, so we should we can talk about them. I don't really have a um, a file per se. That lends itself well to a macro. All right. What if I wanted to? I guess I'll just make one up. If I wanted to take this and uh, hmm, I could copy the next three lines. I don't know. Probably. Not. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, Trying to think. Let's see what I can what I can come up with. Um, this is a relatively this is a relatively new machine. I haven't even brought all my projects onto it yet. All oh, right. Um, Yeah, I, these aren't these just aren't big files. Um, how do you get to that? Is it um, is it already built into Vim? You mean? Oh, wonder if it's well. That's that's Tutor. Oh, that, I have to be in Vim, don't I? Yeah, just tutor. Uh, but then, how do you get to the file you're talking about, or is it just this file? Oh, okay, this is the one you meant. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. Not really. I'm struggling to come up with a a way that we can something that we can use a uh, macro for. All right. Um, let's change all of the. Oh, like the one here. Sure. Okay. So let's. So first, we'll create the macro. So the way you create the macro is just hitting Q, and then you can have up to what. 
I know it works with lowercase. You can have 26. I've never tried it with an uppercase, but you might be able to get like 52 something macros. I don't know if you can use numbers or not. I only ever use one. <laughs> and I, so what I, what, well, the way that I use them is when you hit Q uh, and then Q again, it will start recording into the Q register. So I use just hit QQ or you can hit QA or whatever, but whatever letter you hit after Q, it's going to start recording in that, I guess, register. And then, and now we can go about uh, changing it. So if I, uh, if I do a uh, du or dw to delete the word, and then I go into insert mode and then type the the HTML or so h1, and then I go back into normal mode and then go to the end, and then I probably could have used surround for this, but this will work fine. Um, and then and then I go back into normal mode. And now I quit the. Now I stop the recording. So I hit Q again. And now here's the thing I'm not sure about: is do I hit Q to stop recording because that's the register I'm in, or is just Q just the start and the stop? It's the Q for start and stop. All right, cool. All right, so now we can uh, find the next hash. Yeah, yeah the recording that's a nice way of remembering it and so now I didn't actually account for the two hashes versus the one but um, right it'll convert it to an h1 right so the way that you apply the recording or the way that you run the recording is to use the at sign and then the register that you chose what did I do? Oh, how did I do that? Oh, well, because I was I hadn't hit enter after I was searching for the next. Uh, so let's do the hash. Okay, there's that. And so, okay, so now if I want to run the recording, I just hit the at sign and then Q, and it runs it. So it ran all the same. You just have to be mindful of the commands you're using, so they'll run the way that you intended them to run. Yeah, yeah, you may have to give it, and this is, it's really useful when you have to run it a bunch of times. Now what I've done, uh, because I'm such a fan of macros, is I've mapped, I always found that that at sign and then the Q was a bit mundane, so I just mapped it to space when I'm in normal mode. Really? How do you do that? Oh, does it actually put it in the register? So, help me out here. Am I doing this right? So, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Let's do it here. Um, Yeah, DW, then in insert mode, then the H1, and then, and then capital A. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's like hero mode. Yeah. Be because when you, when you, when you yank, when you paste, or when you, when you yank, when you copy, you can yank it into the register, right? And will it overwrite the register when you do that? Wow, nice. <laughs> That's cool. Now, what's the command to run to see the registers? Can we? Is, that, 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 that. I'm going to be careful showing that. <laughs> what the hell? Why is all that in there? Everything I've copied to. They obviously are, yeah, because I didn't do that in this Vim session. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, probably, uh, let's see, uh, if I hit enter, no, it just takes me back out. I think that's, is that, that must be all of them? Well, there's a queue here. That's, that's what, yeah. 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 So the macros have to go into, I could probably use, uh, I mean, we can try it real quick. I can just um, queue, whoops. Uh, <laughs> and so if I, uh, what was I going to do? I was going to try to do another macro. So if I do Q A, yeah, you can use capitals, obviously. Delete, and then Q. And then at you. <laughs> space, space. If I did what? And it's also, is it popping? Why would it, so when I, so quote 2P, and if I hit dot, 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 it looks like it's, hang on, I just want to see something. Whoops. No, it's all the same. Hmm. Okay, that's going to require some <laughs> playing around. So what? So what was it? Yeah. On forty-one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To be one p. It'd be two, wouldn't it? Uh, so if I YY that one and then delete that one and then uh, quote, is it 2P? Uh, zero P. Yeah. So let's look at those registers again. <laughs> Okay, so it starts at yeah. Okay, it starts at zero. Actually, the the quote register is the first one, right? Yeah. All right, that helps. So it's not zero based; it's quote based. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nerd joke, wasn't it? The, the, yeah, the most recent register. And then there's zero. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. I didn't even realize all that. Well, I mean, I realized that I just never use it. There's so much stuff that you can, that there is that you don't even. Yeah. Yeah. Does 
So that that doesn't delete the registers, does it? No. Yeah. So why why? Uh, is there? A, I wish there was a way we could just clear all the registers. That way we could see what's going on easier. I'm sure there's a way. Is there a way to operate on multiple registers at once? So, for example, um, uh, like like zero to four. Oh, I don't know if that's gonna then delete. No. Yeah, I think it's just because I, I think because I've well I've undone and when you undo I don't think it changes your registers. So if I can if I were to copy that and then copy that, copy that. Hmm. That is weird. <laughs> No, I wouldn't think so. So if we delete that, undo, yank it, delete it, undo, yank it. Huh. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Copying and pasting plus plus. Cool. What else is on? What else is? What, yeah. So how do you? So if I were to delete this and it not well, let's pick something that. Um, uh, deleting this won't make. Okay, so how do I delete this without it being showing up in the registers? Quote, underscore, and then delete. Okay. Yeah, sure enough, it's not there. Whoop, wait a minute, it was there. Yeah, it's in the dot register. Maybe that's just... Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so funny. Cool. Yeah. Golly. Yeah, it's definitely an editor you'll never outgrow. That's, I think that's the thing I love about it. So this is a plugin you're talking about that it will do. How do you do that? Don't remember? What if we um uh wonder if that'd be minutes? Oh, E is edit. Yeah, that that's not gonna do it. Um, what if we do help and then? Oh, yeah, of course you can help earlier. Oh, okay. So the count is the number of times, or oh, E A. Yeah, there it is. E A, right next to my cursor. Um.
Yeah, so seconds, minutes, hours, days. So EA 15 minutes. Uh, if I do dot, will it go back 15 more minutes? <laughs> No, it's deleting. It's deleting right now. Yeah. Thirty minutes ago, I don't think we were editing this file, but oh, true. Ooh, maybe it did that when we. Can you? There's a there a forward too, or just an earlier? <laughs> Would it be later? Later. There is a later. Holy shit. Earlier and later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Later. Production. Yeah. Yeah. Delivery. Yeah. Later. Oh, wow. I love it when it's just so intuitive. And so intuitive. Earlier and later. So if we do. Was that LA? Lat. It was lat. So. Uh, later for by 15 minutes. That's not right. Yeah, but not 15. That's right, I did actually. Yeah. And what's it say? After 55 seconds ago. <laughs> wow. You go back and then forward again? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so we've obviously been talking about some pretty advanced stuff, stuff that many of us didn't know existed. For those of you newer to them, what are your questions? What what what's the thing you're struggling with, or what's the what? What do you think there's a better way to do, or what's what are you currently learning, or we could go around and just find out what everybody's learning. Oh, it's it's new. I actually am just yeah. I've had I've had Fugitive installed for a, a long time, and I've not I've not used it to its full potential. And it was probably a month or so ago when I started. And I've not actually done a very good job of doing all of my Git work inside Vim, so I'm still I'm still very much. And actually, what I did do, one of the things that I have set up is I can I can type in source, and there's actually I just found out today actually there's a much easier way than doing that, and it's just um, uh, I don't remember now what. If I type source, it just opens my Vim RC. Wait a minute. No, that's when I source. Never mind. Uh, it's, it's config. Sorry. And now I need to source this because I sourced something that was weird. Um, but <laughs> I can source my VimRC from inside. So I basically created these. Let this go away. There's probably an easier way, but um, I actually saw something today to open your VimRC from inside of Vim. I found a, a much easier way than doing what I did here. But this is just a, a manual way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this just lets me um, config, open up my VimRC from inside Vim, no matter where I am, and source it once I've made a change, just to kind of play. Um, and yeah. So what I have done is I've gone into what was that? Control U. There. Yeah. So I've I've done this just to try to help me remember a bunch of these different um, fugitive commands but I've not worked it into my muscle memory and, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, but I like to use, I don't do it for a lot of things, but I like to use my VimRC and a lot of other, my, other dot, my other dot files is kind of a way of documenting things so I don't forget. Um, you know, like 
like typing in act is actually is actually quite easy to remember, but I just put it on leader A ma mainly as a documentation way, so I can remember that it's there and it's a way of reminding me and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I think it. I think setting it up was a bit of a pain. Doesn't it need Python and some other things? Or oh, okay. Yeah, I used AG for a while. Yeah. I don't know why I got away from it. Probably just a new machine build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not using... If, is somebody else using Fugitive a lot or using... Oh, yes. Awesome. Do it. Take it. <laughs> do it. G blame. Yeah. No. I looked at that one. No. <laughs> Because it's usually going to be me. <laughs> yeah, and that's AG. Is it act that has the, the the before and after? So you give it dash A and dash B, or dash A after and before? Yeah, and you can tell it how many lines before and after of the thing it found in the file. Is, is that act? I think that's act. Rep does that as well? Yeah. Did the A make it? Yeah. If you if you close that buffer without saving it and then and then run status again, you should be able to unstage it. Aborting commit do that, yeah. Yeah, if you do status again, it should. Oh, it does say modify. It's like your vim gutter or your git gutter. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, yeah. What'd you do? Yeah, diff. Mm. It's uh, it's not actually not the git diff. It's diff add and diff put and diff diff put and diff. Uh, git, I think. Diff git and diff put are the are the commands on the the commands down here. 
So it's actually not a git diff. It's it's actually part of vim. So the diffing is part of vim, and so fugitive uses the diffing for adding and re adding and removing diffs. It uses the vim stuff for that. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> All right, man. Have a, yes, continue again. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, you can select. Blame it on Chromecast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for patching. Yeah, yeah, you could do diff or, or uh, get, what is it, get add minus p, I think, for patching. And then, but the problem is sometimes you can't split. Like if you've got a bunch of changes in together, you like, yeah, if they're too close together within, I think, four or five lines, then you can't split it, at least with that interface, with the, with the get, the, the get, what is it, patch interactive, I think it is, or something. But with this one, you can use visual mode, highlight the ones, and then push, and do a git, what is it? A git push, or a diff push. Diff pull and diff, I always forget. Actually, it's right here. Diff git and diff put. And it depends on whether, so you saw those two different panes that he had up, and I can I can maybe try it here. Uh, let, me, let me rejoin. The thing that I was the most excited about, and, and actually what I'll do, in the uh, in the meetup group is when it comes to fugitive vimcast have you heard of vimcast the guy who does uh, the british guy who does a bunch of screencasting for vim he has a five series uh series on fugitive and it's good it's really good i yeah I've, I've watched that one and learned quite a lot let me so let me so if i let's see if i make a change to where am i there we go. So if I just do, and actually here, I'll say, um, I'll do that. And now if I, what was the name of my mapping? Oh, they're right there in front of my face. Uh, Leader GS. So it doesn't like that. It doesn't like get status. Uh, GS? What's this complaining about? All right. G status. Oh, the reason it's giving, so if you see this, the reason it's doing this is because I'm editing a file that is not in my present working directory, so it's not, yeah. So you have to be in your, you have to be working on a file in your current repo in order for Fugitive to work. So if I were to just pop over here, uh, let me just close out of this together, all together, and open um, just a file. What? Oh. <laughs> uh, config and earlier 20 minutes. Already at oldest change. Wait a minute. Um, oh, it didn't do it. EA, no, you can't. I can't undo from here because it'll say I'm already at the oldest change. But does the EA not work? Because I got I got out of it. Oh, okay. That's right. Does that require a plugin? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Nice. So let's try, let's try that, and then uh, if I save that, and then if I, 
uh, liter GS, and what was it? It was not CC. It was. Do I just hit enter? How did it, how did I get to the the diffing? Oh, was it just get diff? I think. Um. So if I, I think it was GB. Yeah. Okay. So here's this. So if I go down now. And the, the trick with this is knowing whether you're in the index or not. So the change is here, and that's the earlier version. And so let me get my bearings. See, I told you I'm not, I haven't done this very much. What's that? So if I, if I copy, if I highlight this in, in visual mode and then do a, uh, I think it's, whoops, I don't know if I can do this. I do that and then uh, diff put. No. And then what was the other one? Put and get. Oh, that's not it. Uh, visual mode and diff diff get. No. Oh, because no, I don't remember. I don't remember. But yeah, there is a way that you can you can highlight and push that only those changes only, and then of course commit and blah 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 blah. But yeah, there is a way. I just can't remember how. But yeah, Fugitive is pretty amazing. You can the the cool thing about Fugitive that I really want to tap into is being able to go back and see earlier versions of the file. So you can actually go to the file and it's like tree, I think, and you can go back into the history of the file. So it basically crawls through your Git history showing you different versions of the file in the past. That would be really, without having to switch branches, that's the thing, right? Like normally you'd have to check out a separate branch and then da da da, so yeah, this one would, or actually check out the earlier version, but you don't have to do any of that. So yeah, Fugitive's pretty powerful when you actually, you know, force yourself to use it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then seeing on like Vim Awesome that it's like the number one thing. It's like, oh, that must be really useful, and you end up adding it, and then not forcing yourself to use it. But yeah, if you force yourself to use it, I've, I've gotten a little better, but I'm still not, not anywhere near I need to be. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I've done the same thing. Get status. Get add. Get commit. Get check out. All those are yeah. The, what oh Zush does? Oh Zush. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't added. Well, I only. Well, now we're switching gears, of course. But um, the only one that I've added is is this this Git log. So GLL. I've got a special. Um, um, So it's yeah, it's quite a nice Git log. Oh yeah. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I use NVM, or actually NVM LS. But yeah, this. So the the status bar I'm using. So I'm using Zush, but um, I'm using what are they? S spaceship. Yeah, the, the spaceship uh, plugin. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty nice one because it, it'll detect whether I'm using Node and show the little Node sign. But if I'm using Ruby or Python or any of the other ones, it has little icons and it works with you know RVM and all the other yeah package managers and yeah it's pretty nice. Cool. Um, yeah. What else? That's probably enough for now. I don't know how big this screen recording is. I use Vint or what is it? Surround? It's Tim Pope's Surround plugin. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I use it all the time. Yeah, we can talk about that one in the next meetup. Any other ideas for the future meetups? Is this a good format? Do we want to change the format a bit? Do we want to do more of a of a one to many? Do we want to have I don't know. What what are your thoughts? Is this is this working? 
I like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. That would be cool. Let's. I'll put that in the. I'll put that as a as a future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Show your VimRC or show your favorite things that you do or show how you normally set it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Worst thing.